So imagine yourself as an intelligence officer. It doesn't have to be from the CIA. It doesn't have to be from MI6, the Mossad. It could be from any intelligence agency within any respective country that you want to envision. Now, you're going undercover, okay? And you're going undercover to pretend to be just an average working day person with a family. Now, the family is fake. It's all set up by the government that you're working for because you have a target, which is a person that, not that you're trying to kill, but that is a person you are trying to extract information from. Now, pretend you're trying to extract information from this particular person, and the reason why the government you're working for has given you a fake family is because you have found an opening. And for those who are members, you'll understand what that opening concept is from a, a member's episode a couple of nights ago, uh, or a couple of days ago, excuse me. What ends up happening is you then start going to your fake child's soccer games because that child that is working for the government as well is playing soccer with your target's child as well. And that is how you're trying to make friends with your target in order to extract information from them. You see what I'm saying? You're going to try to make small talk on the sidelines of the soccer field. Now, you might be saying, Dave, this is a bit ridiculous, but folks, this is how intelligence operations generally tend to work, and I think a lot of you understand that. So, you're standing on the sidelines of the soccer field, and you start to get close over, you know, the days of the different soccer practices and all that with your intended target. And you start to say to this person who is a scientist that you're trying to get information from, for example, you say, hey, you know, my kid's got this school project at his or her school and they're working on, you know, uh, propulsion and things like that. But at the same time, you don't want to get too obvious with what you're trying to do, which is extract information from that target. Because, again, you have to play in the confines of the scenario you're put in. Your child is, you know, 15, 16 years old. They're not going to be working on, you know, classified rocketry propulsion. But you want to test this person your target as the agent to see if they will give you information even if that information is not classified why it is because they are what is referred to as taskable now what is taskable before we jump into the whole you know episode overall i know this is a little bit of a longer intro than normal but i feel it's very important when you are able to take someone and make them taskable for you what that basically means in this example would be that, you know, the person that your target that you just asked to receive some intelligence information has now gone back to their office and picked up some papers and some studies for you and has given it to you. None of it's classified. So the person is not getting in any trouble with what, uh, you know, with their government or what have you. But what does that show? It shows that the person, your target is able to follow orders on in a, in a sort of way, a blindly willingness, just based on how personable and friendly you are to them. You see what I'm saying? And that doesn't make them stupid. That doesn't make them a sucker. That doesn't make them foolish because a lot of smart people become taskable as well. What this does show is that you can start to pull on that string with them and slowly but surely get to know them well enough where you can then dangle something over their head. So when it comes time to expose who you are, if you do and blackmail them for classified information, you can get it. So I know that was a bit of a long example, but the reason for that is because you're going to see why this comes full circle. Now, before I get into it, what I also want to mention too is that I will be getting back into the shoutouts. I'd like to give a very special shout out to Kong, Dave Smith, John, and Riel. I'd like to thank all of you for your contributions and support for the show. Now, today's episode is called The Odin Departure, Reaping Hexagonal Transplants for COG Stability. Now, COG is very simple. What it stands for, I've mentioned in the past, stands for Continuity of Government. But this time around, it is Continuity of the Shadow Government. So the example I just gave at the beginning has to do with the overall concept that the elites, the different factions of elites and extraterrestrials that are overseeing the governance and mass control, not specific individualistic control, but mass control are doing the same thing. They are currently testing the waters with the different apparatuses of drop feeding to see how much we as a society metaphorically, you know, become taskable, if you will, if that makes sense. So let's take a look at this article right here. Independent.co.uk. Obama predicts new religions could arise if proof of aliens discovered. It wouldn't change my politics at all because my entire politics is premised on the fact that we are these tiny organisms on this little speck floating in the middle of space. End quote. Now, here's what's also equally as interesting. You might be saying, Dave, okay, why are you showing me something about President Obama? I thought these were the very people you have been trying to tell us not to believe. Well, that's exactly correct. But the reason I bring this up is because what this article is doing on a mass level, as, as, as we can see being broadcast by independent.co.uk, is they're trying to put a fishing rod or they're, they're trying to fish for our 
attention and consciousness, and they're seeing not how much we retain attention to things like this, but how taskable our consciousness could be. Now, you might be saying, Dave, you've been speaking about mass consciousness a lot lately, so how come, you know, it's is it not as simple as just having different machines placed around the world in correspondence with different geometrical uh, capabilities and operations to control and curate mass consciousness? That's a big chunk of it, but there's another part of it as well. So, let's take a look at this right here. CBC.ca. Aboriginal nutritional experiments had Ottawa's approval. Now, you might be saying, okay, Dave, why do you bring this up? This is an article from 2013. Well, those 215 Aboriginal children that were found dead and buried from many, many years ago on First Nations land in Canada, which has yet to come to an explanation, shows within this article that they were testing very secretly, okay, from a very, very, I guess we could say fundamental standpoint of the way in which experiments were to be carried out on people that it's unfortunate to say, but it's true that at the time the government deemed to be less than human, because why would you experiment on people that you care about, right? Clearly they were experimenting on people they didn't care about. But if we take a look here, when it says had Ottawa's approval, that's Ottawa is the capital of Canada in a political sense. And that is essentially, it's, it's equal to us saying, you know, had, uh, had a certain test in the U S had Washington's approval, if you will. Now, the next thing I want to take a look at, because this this is going to tie in everything is technology.org researchers from Zurich, excuse me, have developed a compact energy efficient device made from artificial neurons that is capable of decoding brain waves. The chip uses data recorded from the brain waves. Okay. Now, again, I thought this was all this whole quantum energy, quantum healing, this whole thing about the body emitting frequencies at a quantum level. I thought that was all BS, but I guess not. Right. The chip uses data recorded from the brain waves of epilepsy patients to identify which regions of the brain cause epileptic seizures. This opens up new perspectives for treatment. And quote, again, notice how they slip it right in there. A handful of years ago, no, no, this, this couldn't exist. It's not possible. Then all of a sudden it's, oh, well, you know, guess what? By the way, we discovered this and they skip over the mass revelation by making it seem like in the mainstream media, it's just nothing. You know what I mean? So when we look back at the Obama article, and I read this particular quote on purpose, is because if we look here, he says, my entire politics is premised on the fact that we are these tiny organisms on this little speck floating in the middle of space. I could not help but think when I connected the data points within the research for this episode, folks, that this is a subliminal form of programming that is trying to tell us, the masses, that we could be taskable. And this is a test, the article itself, and the whole message of it, not just this article, but the whole concept is an ideological and consciousness consciousnessly formed energetic test but what obama is also saying here too is and again not to be political this could have been a republican as well what obama's saying here too is we are nothing we are the masses are absolutely nothing now here is the best thing that i want to show or one of the better things this is nmn.com the official info source for nicotinamide monocule mononucleotide, excuse me, can organ transplantation help you live forever? I thought it couldn't. There were so many studies in the vast uh, academia uh, institutions of STEM for many years saying, no, organ transplants can't help you make any, can't help you live any longer, right? But I, I mean, look, this article was published on May 12th, uh, 2021. I thought it was not possible though. You see the hypocrisy of how they slip it in. Now let's take a look. In the dystopian movie, The Island, starring Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson, clones of regular people are grown as a source of replacement body parts for ailing DNA matched clients. Wealthy people willing to pay large sums of money to extend their lifespans. Now, this is what's also equally as interesting too. If we take a look at the fact that if you see here, it says the importance of biological age and transplantation. This is not, end quote, this is not necessarily necessarily anything new. Why? Because there are extraterrestrials that are drop feeding this type of information from the deep underground military bases that disseminate such propaganda that mix a little bit of truth in there in order to show the overall harvesting of the way in which these energy grids work. And you might be saying, Dave, what are you talking about? Well, there are a lot of people, particularly very recently that I've seen in the sky will look to be hexagonal shapes with ufo sightings coming either before or after right and here's the thing hexagonal grids have energetic influence which is also what the pentagon secret army was using in correspondence with darpa but we'll put that aside for a second now here's the other thing i want to mention as well too this is disclose.tv china is building mysterious reactors and no one knows why two new nuclear reactors could ensure that more weapons grade plutonium 
plutonium, plutonium is produced in China as early as 2023. Scientists around the world are concerned, end quote. Now, this is the part in which I want to make very, very specific to those that are trying to grasp the concept of the message I'm trying to relay here, which is this. This is black.grayfalcon.us, Thule Gesselshaft, and the Vril Society. Hopefully, I didn't, uh, I didn't butcher that. There are two secret societies that have been working in unison, the Thule Gesselshaft and the Vril Society. Those who know anything at all about how Hitler rose to power have heard about them both because they have influenced the political climate in Germany behind the scenes and were the forces that helped bring the Fuhrer to power. All right. Now, end quote, before we go on, here's what I want to mention. We all know Hitler, and this is not a World War II episode, but we all know Hitler had a very, very significant interest in the occult. Excuse me. So, when we look at that, and we look at the fact that there was mass influence, what we also have to uh, note as well, too, is that Hitler's doctor, all right, he was known, generally speaking, to hold a journal, if you will, and this journal more so than not, would discuss him seeing uh, Hitler and his doctor seeing hexagons within the sky. I kid you not, and I'll be putting some of the journal entries up of those right now. Some of the hexagon shapes in the sky, why is that? Because for those who think that it is just artificial technology in a physical sense of, you know, big machinery or something going on at CERN that redirects mass consciousness, that's only a percentage of it. A decent percentage of it, granted, but that's only a percentage of it. There is an occult and geometrical apparatus at play here and the goal is to keep the shadow government and the elites in control they don't care how much the public knows what ends up happening is how much the public will believe on a mass level because if we want to talk about disclosure arguably it's already in terms of aliens and all that it's there for those who really look a good chunk of it is there, right? Maybe not proof. To some, they have proof, but evidence. Again, more than enough to substantiate a probable cause of the conclusion we're trying to discover. With that being said, let's take a look at this right here. Dis, uh, disc aircraft.grayfalcon.us. The Vril Discs. The Vril motto, not all good comes from above, summarizes the entire history of the Vril Gesselshaft Society from its inception. The name Vril is the shortening of V-R-I-I-L, uh, which means like God. All right. Officially, Vril was the all German society for metaphysics, which merged with the Thule Gesellschaft and the obscure, uh, obscure DHVSS men of the Black Stone in the year 1919. The Black Stone, coincidentally enough, was the shape of a square, black cube, black square. You see all of a sudden this Saturnarian concept, if you will. It never really went away. Okay, now here's what we also have to take a look at as well here that's significant. Confused by the strange language and mental images she was receiving, which was Sigrun, who was known as Divril Sheffin, or, you know, the leader, if you will, or one of the leaders, who was allegedly not even human, by the way. We could refer to them as witches, extraterrestrials, Venusians, you name it. Confused by the strange language and the mental images she was receiving through psychic channeling, Maria Orsic of Thule joined with the Vril Gresselshaft, which brought in another psychic medium named Sigrun to help translate the alien language, which turned out to be ancient Sumerian and decipher the strange mental images of a circular flight machine for making contact. Sigrun was not the Vril medium's true name, but is derived from Sigrun, one of the nine daughters of Odin and of Valkyrie, again, hence the name of the episode, The Odin Departure. Despite their distrust of men, the woman of Vril joined with the Thule Gesselshaft and DHVSS in order to construct an interdimensional channeled flight disc known as the Gensites Flug Machine, or JFM. All right. By 1922, the odd disc-shaped machine was constructed in Munich and tested for two years. It is not known if any success with channeled flight was ever achieved, but a certain W.O. Schumann of the Technical University of Munich invented a levitator from the channel JFM information provided by the mediums Maria Orsic and Sigrun, all right? By 1924, the JFM project was scrapped, but work continued on perfecting the levitator until known by then as the Schumann SM levitator. End quote. Again, take a look at something. Look at the coincidence of the Schumann resonance, that whole theory there, right? Which NASA has said has been widely accepted. A little bit interesting when we take a look at Operation Paperclip and we factor all that in. But the overall goal here, folks, has to do with the example I gave at the beginning, showing that the masses at the most fundamental level, all right? are still in a major way able to be taskable what do i mean by that hexagon based energies that have been showing up in the skies as previous you know leaders and their doctors and all that have have, have spoken about uh, in their journals not necessarily publicly but have written about in their private journals 
and in many cases uh, allowed for you know the um, the allies to make it classified and all that which would make sense they've spoken about hexagonal shapes or energies being seen in this being seen in the sky right before they're about to go to a political rally or a massive event of influence on a massive scale now not massive relative to the population of the planet but large relative to the population of influence in which that energy could transmit so in correspondence with their actually being physical uh, esoteric machines and interdimensional machines that aliens and human beings use in order for influence of mass consciousness to occur there is also a natural i guess you could say and again we have to define what the word natural means but there is a natural form that is slowly disseminating into the masses of the way in which our 3d i guess you could say earth or globe tends to project itself so what's happening here is these hexagonal energies if you will, are using the different organ transplants from the elites that are slowly but surely revitalizing themselves, similar to the theory about how Prince Philip is still alive, just in another body, to then keep and maintain control of the consciousness. And the reason for this is because this is the same type of apparatus that Hitler used in order to keep a vast majority of the German people focused on a particular ideology. Because the ability to rebel, at least within an internal uh, mind frame, was there. Hitler Hitler was not mind controlling people, but he got as close as he could from an energetic standpoint to infiltrate the mind, if you will. Now, again, when we take a look at this right here, revolutionary, this is SciTechDaily.com, revolutionary self-aware materials build the foundation for living structures. You're telling me that these materials have just been discovered now and they're not already being used by DARPA, the CIA. And again, I hate to label them that because we can argue they're still, you know, Nazi influence because of Operation Paperclip in the CIA and all that. But you're telling me that this is only being discovered now. New research in nano energy, not necessarily nanotech, but nano energy introduces revolutionary scalable materials material that senses and powers itself okay and this is what's interesting to better address these potential threats the intelligent structural monitoring and response testing lab at the university of pittsburgh has designed new class of materials that are both sensing mediums and nano generators since before i go on sensing mediums folks does that not sound like the woman that we just recently discussed except that would be in a more organic form this here is more of an esoteric technological mix and this mergent has allowed for such extraterrestrials to harness this and not only drop feed it to humans for humans on a secretive level to drop feed into the public but if we also take a look at this article right here researchers design graphene-info.com researchers design a graphene based encrypted key for novel hardware security interesting isn't it because you know what this graphene based apparatus for those that are not members may in fact lead to there's only so much i could discuss on a public level but it has to do with these elites having to have certain frequential organs transplanted into their new bodies in order for them to go through things like for example the 20 and back program or different portals or dimensions because the energies need to adapt to that of the transplanted organs that are able to sustain it you see what i'm saying it's like trying to drive a, I don't know, um, it, it's like trying to drive a car into water when you know the car is not made to be on water. It's the same idea. So what do you do? You either get a boat or you make the car adaptable to water. One of the two. It's the same idea in the sense of what they're doing with the organs and with the hexagonal energies that are influencing the masses. So this does tie in a little more politically than I would like it to. With that being said, though, I hope you all understand and grasp the concept of what I'm trying to uh, what I'm trying to make more open, if you will, in terms of the messaging of the way in which the mass consciousness is shifting. And we will catch you in a day or two. Cheers.